Good afternoon. My name is Vignesh Varanaya. I'm dialing in from Malaysia. Firstly, my apologies for doing this uh, recording. Uh, I had an issue uh, within my family and uh, I'm not able to uh, present uh, live uh, as scheduled uh, in your program. So hence, uh, I have done this recording just a few uh, hours ahead of the uh, event today. So today, uh, I'm going to be talking about rethinking tourism in the new normal. So allow me to share my screen. Okay, so I hope you are able to see my screen. So once again, I would like to thank the uh, organizer for managing my situation and also for inviting me for, for this uh, event uh, today. Uh, so as I've said, uh, the topic of my presentation is key to where tourism is uh, currently. So I am currently uh, based in Malaysia, attached to a distant college. Uh, uh, I have been traveling quite a bit uh, over the years, uh, based from Malaysia, and then I moved to the Bahamas, and I've been involved in many uh, projects in relation to tourism uh, all across uh, Southeast Asia and also uh, in the Caribbean. So you can see from this chart basically to show uh, my travel over the last few years. Uh, I was based in the Bahamas for five years, uh, and before that I was at Taylor's University Malaysia for almost 20 years, and now I'm back to Malaysia in Penang uh, at uh, District College. So this is uh, where Penang is. You can see some of the beautiful images of Penang here. And this is District College, which is uh, owned by the Wawasan Open University. So, so I'm really glad to be presenting today on behalf of the college uh, and also very glad to find opportunity to collaborate uh, with the universities uh, in India. So our discussion today is to look at the new way or the new way of doing or managing the hospitality and tourism industry. Uh, in 2020, I, I did publish a book called Responsible Tourism in Asia, where some of the issues that we are talking today is also encapsulated in this uh, publication. So when you get a chance, you just go to amazon.com and just type Responsible Rural Tourism in Asia and uh, you can check out the books and if you're keen to purchase the, the book. So what I'm going to speak to you about uh, very briefly is to talk about uh, some of the trends that is taking place currently uh, pre and post uh, during the COVID period and also how the COVID situation has impacted the tourism industry and what is uh, our future trends or what are we predicting to happen in the future and how do we move forward uh, from here. So let's look at uh, the, the first part of the presentation today. So if you look at uh, this, uh, this chart here, uh, recovery is going to be very different from how it was before. In the past, uh, a lot of the uh, cases, uh, crises that we have seen uh, have been very short term, okay? One to three months or the most six to seven months. We have not seen uh, a crisis that we are experiencing uh, currently with longer period of recovery projected. And this has impacted uh, the world economy, okay, including the tourism industry as we see now. So if you look at uh, all these charts, the next few charts are very much uh, uh, coming from uh, SDR or the Smith Travel Research, uh, which I put the email there, Steve Hood, uh, my good friend uh, in the US who have provided a lot of these charts uh, uh, based on their own research. So if you look at uh, this chart, this chart basically shows uh, 2020 is the worst year in the history of the hotel industry, as we all know. So when you compare 20, uh, 2019 to 2020, uh, you can actually see there is a total reduction in terms of the hotel occupancy all across the continent, right from North America, Central America, Northern Africa, South America, uh, even in Asia. Um, so you can actually see that uh, the impact uh, on the whole globally is quite significant. Okay, from 66%, it has dwindled down to 33%. And then if you see uh, 
the figures for 2021, uh, there is a slight increase, okay, uh, comparative to the figures in 2020. Uh, you can see uh, there's a mix in the sense that uh, many of the continents have shown uh, increase, uh, except for a few places like South Africa, Southern Africa, uh, the Australia and Oceania, which is really, uh, they have been in a, in a total lockdown for a long period of time. And also in Asia, excluding uh, mainland China, where the, the figures are still pretty much low. The occupancy is about 36%. And if you look at uh, this chart, uh, which shows the, the ADR or the uh, average uh, daily rate measures, this basically measures the average uh, rental revenue earned uh, for an occupied room uh, per day. So basically, uh, it is room revenue divided by the room sold. So again, you can see on average, uh, all the continents uh, by November 2021 is slowly coming up almost at 100 USD, except for Asia, which is still trying to catch up. They're still uh, at, at 72 uh, USD. So this is something uh, that's worrying, but uh, the figures are going up as we speak. So uh, the WTTC report basically shows the global trends uh, economically for 2021 for tourism. And you can actually see that uh, the drastic uh, drop uh, from 2019 to 2020 uh, in terms of jobs, in terms of uh, the contribution to the GDP. So this is quite significant and we are quite aware how much it has affected the uh, tourism industry. So if you look at this, check, uh, this chart, uh, there's a few pointers here that I want to highlight. So if you look at uh, uh, item that has been labeled A there, September 11, that's when uh, if you look at the period during September 11, uh, there is a drip, a short dip uh, in the uh, growth of the tourism and travel uh, industry. And then if you look at B there, that is when uh, the global uh, financial crisis took place. So travel and tourism, uh, uh, total GDP loss in 2020 was actually nearly almost 18 to 20 times higher than during the global financial crisis. So if you compare the, uh, the absolute GDP loss, or it is almost 12 times higher if you compare in terms of the percentage. So for the C, item C there, this is the COVID-19 period that we are in now. So travel and tourism GDP has declined close to 50% in 2020 versus the overall uh, economic change. So uh, travel and tourism GDP growth uh, have really outpaced the overall uh, economy GDP growth for nine consecutive years between 2011 to 2019. By 2020, you can see how much it has dipped. While uh, domestic visitor spending decreased uh, by almost 45%, international visitor spending declined by an unprecedented 69.4% uh, to ongoing. Uh, due to the ongoing uh, travel restrictions. So, so this led to domestic visitor spending, uh, uh, gaining the share of overall travel. And you can see that because domestic tourism still was booming in many destinations uh, across the globe, including in, in Asia. And then in terms of uh, the business travel and leisure travel, uh, you can also see that uh, in parallel, the, the leisure spending have decreased by 49.4%, a smaller decline than the business spending, but there's a huge decline for those business uh, travelers. Over the last decade as well, uh, travel and tourism has been an important driver for the job creation and a dynamic uh, engine of uh, employment opportunities. So in 2019, the sector supported uh, 334 million jobs, okay, almost 10.6% of all jobs and was uh, responsible for creating one in four all net new jobs across the world between 2014 and 2019. So in 2020, 62 million jobs were lost, uh, leaving uh, close to 272 million uh, employed across the sector globally. So this 18.5% uh, decrease was felt uh, across the entire uh, travel and tourism ecosystem with the small, medium-sized enterprise, which actually makes up 
80% of all uh, global business in the sector is being uh, uh, particularly uh, affected. So this decrease has uh, these, uh, a pro, uh, disproportionately uh, impacted uh, SMEs, women, youth, and minorities who are working or who have been part and parcel of the travel and tourism uh, industry. So the threat of employment destruction persists. Okay, millions uh, of the remaining jobs uh, that are currently supported by uh, government retention schemes and, re uh, and reduced hours could be lost without a full recovery of the travel and tourism uh, sector. So again, uh, this chart basically shows uh, the GDP change uh, over some of the areas that I, I mentioned to you earlier. So all across, it is almost 50% uh, coming across the whole globe. In the Asia Pacific, uh, where uh, it was at one point was the fastest growing region in 2019, with uh, travel and tourism GDP growing by 7.4 percent at that point. Now you can see this total reduction in the travel movement within Asia Pacific. So this was driven uh, in the past by the, the continued growth in the uh, middle income uh, household. Uh, uh, and, and, the, and the way how visa facilitation was done within Asia Pacific. But in 2020, however, with COVID, uh, with all the restrictions that we've gone through, it was the worst performing region, okay, with the sector contributing to the growth dropping by almost 53.7%. So it's the same with the job where there's a huge uh, loss in, in job uh, employment uh, within the travel sector. So how has all this uh, impacted COVID-19 uh, on the hospitality and tourism uh, industry? Firstly, there are many businesses that will continuously will face uh, the uphill challenge of uh, post-COVID uh, post or even during COVID uh, period. So the recovery will be a bit more slower. So you see how some of this industry has struggled through the cruise industry, airline, energy supplies, uh, Gym, gym uh, chains, uh, cinemas, uh, restaurants and bars and clubs, uh, entertainment industry, retailers, theme parks, so all these are slowly coming back, but there will still be a lot of struggle as we move into a new way of managing the tourists. You can see over the last uh, one and a half to two years how uh, uh, tourism destinations have gone deserted in, in many areas, many top tourist destinations. Uh, it'll take much longer for some of the airlines to recover the loss. Uh, you see some airlines are slowly coming back, but it is going to take a, a while because uh, the airline was grounded for too long of a period. So the recovery uh, across the globe is going to take a while. The same thing goes to cruise ship. So cruise ship was impacted significantly uh, because they, they, have, they have been labeled as a floating petri dish with... Uh, a lot of outbreak uh, within the cruise and the cruise could not even uh, port anywhere because of this situation. So, so where are we heading? The travel industry have to evolve, uh, have to look at how, what are the things that the new tourists expect? The travel behavior have actually since changed. So if you look at a lot of the statistics that has come out uh, over the years, uh, especially the six charts, it gives you a quick snapshot of the global impact of COVID-19 uh, for the tourism industry. Okay, uh, So will we ever take a cruise holiday after this? What is the life after lockdown? Will COVID uh, change uh, the way we travel forever? Will international travel ever recover from COVID pandemic? Okay, You will travel after COVID, but it will never be the same. So, uh, so this is something that is going to be within us. So if you look at even the food industry, uh, there's a significant impact of this lockdown. Lockdown uh, with restaurants, cafes, and bars closed, uh, even for takeaway and contactless service now has become key. So the only food uh, retail outlet uh, deemed essential were, were the malls and the supermarket at, at one point. And now you see uh, there is a continuous change in the travel behavior and the consumer behavior so even uh, after COVID, uh, you will see some of these uh, changes in the behavior will remain. It is not going to, 
it, it will not totally disappear. So, you, so again here, uh, this, this uh, chart basically shows that uh, the impact of COVID-19 on the food sector, especially uh, uh, the tourists and also the local supplies here, how the impact have really significantly changed uh, how you uh, function and how you manage the, the situation. The consumer's preference have actually totally changed uh, over, overnight in how we manage them. So when you talk about, so what do we predict uh, in the coming future? So if you look uh, uh, this particular chart here from EPCO, uh, EPCO Worldwide is an uh, independent uh, uh, global public affairs and strategic communication consultancy. So based on their own study, uh, post-pandemic prediction for the travel industry, uh, their analysis basically showed that uh, across the industry, there is going to be some significant changes. Two major uh, prediction uh, themes came out of the analysis. The first one can be grouped uh, into the theme uh, travel motivators and uh, industry improvement, as you see in the chart. And the second one grouped into the theme uh, travel destination. So if you look, uh, when you drill further uh, these two themes, three key motivators that will uh, prompt people to travel uh, post-COVID-19 are the travelers' uh, health and safety. The family travel and domestic travel will really do well, including uh, leisure travels more than a business travel. And then, of course, the whole uh, travel sales promotion and deal. what sort of deals uh, that is going to be put in place to encourage people to travel, to encourage people to, at short notice, make significant changes to the travel and not lock them up. Uh, so what do we need to know now uh, to prepare for the future as we are slowly inching away coming out of this uh, current, current pandemic? Number one, travel patterns will change. We have to accept the fact and we need to find ways to, to support this. Hospitality and tourism jobs will need to evolve. If you are a university or a college that is offering hospitality and tourism, you have to start thinking at your curriculum, how, what sort of changes that you need to do to support the changes that is expected in the new norm for the industry. Technology, okay, will become key. Smart tourism is going to be an, uh, an important aspect of our life safety and health standard will become a new norm for us. So what is key is for us to find the right balance between the health pandemic and also the economic pandemic. We cannot continuously shut down the country, but we got to manage. People learn to live with this virus. When you talk about finding the right balance, remember the, the three Ps of sustainability, managing the people, the profit, and the planet. Okay, the people is a social aspect, the profit is economic, and the planet is environment. But of course, uh, what is key now is also the, the, the fourth P, uh, which I have always been talking about, the politics. Okay, The political will has become key for us to get out of this pandemic and get the industry moving. So there, there are so many trends that is defining the, the tourism industry uh, as, as, as we come out of this COVID, okay? As I mentioned, we are learning to adopt new habits, okay? This new habit is not just to come out of this uh, pandemic, but this new habit may remain, okay? The way our awareness on safety, okay? Wearing your mask, sanitation, uh, and uh, social this all social distancing all this is going to become a norm of our life. Technology as an enabler for the hospitality and tourism industry is going to be key. Whether it's for food delivery or for for travel booking, every single thing is going to be technology driven. After this, safety revamped. Yes, safety here meaning the health component here. How do we manage food safety? How do we manage travel safety? All that is going to become part and parcel of the tourism industry, which become key as well if you are teaching hospital and tourism uh, in your curriculum. Food and travel sustainability will be key. 
Okay, we realized during the COVID period how important uh, is sustainability. You can see a lot of destination that, that went on shutdown suddenly improved the environment. At the same time, a lot of destination that could not uh, sustain where they, they rely on uh, uh, import of food coming from outside, they struggle when there were a lot of shutdown. If you look at the Caribbean, where I was based in the Bahamas, uh, where every food items, uh, almost every items comes from the US and during a lockdown period, it became tough to get the movement of goods uh, coming uh, uh, from the US uh, to the Bahamas. There are new way, new way of doing things moving forward, right from new way of dining, okay, new way of, of, of going into your tour, what sort of tour that is key for you, mass tourism will disappear, over tourism will disappear, niche tourism is going to be key after this, rural tourism is going to be key after this, you are going to go to a destination where there's not going to be as many people. So high yield tourism is going to be key compared to the low yield in the past where the focus is, the more, the cheaper you get. So you're going to move away from that concept after this. So moving forward, uh, we have to abide by uh, the call from uh, UNWTO for us to uh, prioritize our recovery plan. So the role, the political weight, as I mentioned, becomes key here because the industry is expected to have a negative growth and, and it's going to take a while for these uh, SMEs, especially the 80% SMEs I mentioned, to actually recover. So the political and financial commitment uh, is going to be key for the recovery uh, to support uh, the, the, the movement of the industry. So, so whatever happens, even we do come out of this uh, current situation, it is not going to be business as usual anymore. This crisis uh, have reshaped the industry's futures landscape. A new normal is taking shape. So given the crisis, uh, uh, what actually should uh, all the stakeholders of this industry be, be, take, be, be doing? Uh, as far as marketing and communication is concerned. So if you see, we are learning, first of all, uh, you need to know that it is not a post-COVID era yet. We are still at the, crisis, at the uh, COVID situation, but as we move out of it, uh, we have to remember that we have to change the way how we operate. All tourism-related uh, stakeholders must innovate a new approach. The current crisis uh, may not be one-off. Uh, we may be facing similar or different type of crisis or more frequently uh, uh, similar type of crisis uh, and we need to know how to uh, how the industry can can work around any crisis and transform itself so the key word here is uh, resilience the resilience uh, if you see here has been defined as the capacity of a system to absorb uh, disturbance and uh, and reorganize while undergoing change so as to still uh, retain essentially the same function, structure, identity, and feedback. So what basically trying to say here is you need to ensure that your destination is able to regroup, reevaluate, rebuild, and recover. You need to find ways uh, to advance despite any adversity. Hence, the role of the government becomes key. You need to have good governance system uh, put in place. So this is key when you talk about resilient. It's important element of, uh, of policy making. Building capacity for economic resilience and is and is uh, is dependent upon the availability of a lot of things, especially technology, financials, and, and social capital. All this is key when you talk about uh, good governance. Food security is key. Uh, and we saw that during the COVID period. So there is a there's a renewed interest now in food security and also in terms of the role of uh, ag agriculture. So the diversification of the tourism dependent economies is key to reduce the impact during the crisis. You can see that countries that are over reliant on tourism basically struggle through during the period of uh, COVID. So in terms of business resi uh, resilience, so enhancing the, the business climate uh, uh, is key aspect of, of resilience. And you see that uh, in one country, uh, in, in the Bahamas, uh, this was an important aspect uh, and similar to the Bahamas and, and in uh, any other countries, uh, business resilience is one way 
for us to ensure that uh, the, the SMEs, which makes up 80% of the industry, uh, tourism industry, is able to bounce back quickly with good business-friendly policies that the government uh, has put in place. So in times of disaster, uh, businesses need assistance uh, to rebound, uh, boost the economy, and uh, ensure uh, greater prosperity uh, for the local uh, population. Rainy day funds. So having a, a strong uh, uh, reserve of funds will allow for a continued uh, strong uh, marketing effort during any crisis. So remember, during a crisis like this, what is key is, is for you to ensure that there is sufficient fund for you to bounce back. So, so this is key, uh, especially in destinations where there are always a crisis, not just a COVID crisis. If you look at the uh, if you look at the uh, uh, countries in the Caribbean, this is always a big challenge where uh, there's always a hurricane. If you look at in the Pacific, it's the same. You have the typhoon that is coming every now and then. So you need to have a uh, cushion to impact uh, this during such crisis. Collaboration becomes key, and we saw that during the COVID period. Uh, how countries started uh, working together. So this is key uh, for you to ensure that a destination is able to recover. You are not an island, you cannot work in silo. So, so uh, selling a destination uh, is as important as selling the country. So uh, if you look at some region like ASEAN, Southeast Asia, uh, there's a lot of close collaboration among the countries to ensure that the destination or the region is stable. So in terms of uh, the way forward is we need to come out of the vulnerability stage to ensure that we are more resilient economically, environmentally, and also socially. So there are so many things uh, that has to be done collaboratively to ensure that the region, wherever, whichever region that you are in is as stable. So of course, the one approach is the travel bubble, which was also uh, tested out during the period of COVID. There are mixed uh, results with some places working very well with the bubble, some not. So because when you talk about bubble, uh, it is basically an, an exclusive uh, partnership between countries that have managed to contain. You can see some of the bubbles uh, happening uh, currently uh, where a few countries are signing up some partnership deal to ensure there is a bubble and slowly increase this bubble and hopefully, by increasing this bubble, more countries is, uh, is able to abide by the protocols and then come into uh, play as well. Hence, uh, eventually, you can break the bubble and the whole world has been uh, secured in that, uh, in that period. So another change that is happening is also what we call the regenerative tourism, which I've talked about in, in many uh, forums. So when you talk about regenerative tourism, is you're just making sure that uh, the tourism industry is getting better, okay? You're doing more, not just sustaining. Remember the whole concept of sustainability. When you talk about sustainable tourism, you're sustaining net zero. When you talk about re regenerative tourism, you're talking about net positive. You always do something positive. If something goes bad in terms of crisis, it will not dip to negative. It will come down maybe the most it comes to the sustainable level. So this is something that is key now that is taking shape uh, in, in, in many parts of the world with many principles that has come out uh, to support uh, uh, regenerative tourism. So it is led by the uh, coalition uh, Future of Tourism where they came up with these 13 uh, guiding uh, principles. Uh, so these 13 guiding principles can be incorporated easily uh, in any destination. So all this information, you can easily Google about it and get the details of how, if you are keen to actually uh, adopt some of these uh, uh, concepts uh, here. So there are going to be a lot of changes happening uh, across the globe. So if you look uh, in the last 20 years, that especially uh, since September 11, the main focus of the uh, of uh, uh, travel have been security, especially in, in the Airport, but virtually nothing uh, was done or spent on health. But if you see now, the health seem to be the new focus. Everywhere you go, for those of you who managed to travel uh, during this COVID period, maybe you're returning back to your country or what you would have experienced all these things that you see on the screen. 
So health seems to be the new in-flight service. It has become key for many de destinations. Uh, health uh, is the new focus on visitor arrival everywhere. Social distancing has become normal. Uh, queuing up uh, in, in many places has become a norm uh, as well. And then you see the way how you order your food, uh, the digitalization, food ordering uh, has also become so uh, uh, different from how, how we are so used to over the past many years. Uh, you have to define where you can sit or where you cannot sit. This has also become a new norm. Will this change? Will this not change in the future? We don't know. Uh, but uh, this is the current state we are in. Uh, health certificate to travel visa for vaccination or health uh, your certificate of your vaccination, which is valid, which is invalid, which COVID uh, vaccination is recognized, which is not recognized. So the, all these things have to be sorted out. We cannot continuously argue on this anymore. Uh, so there are different travel essentials that you carry after this, okay? As you travel, mask is going to be part and parcel of it, your apps, whatever apps that is needed, the more meter to manage, you to, to, to even measure the, your level of oxygen in your body, all those things has going to become key. Contactless uh, uh, entry and out of the country has become key. Now, many destinations have already started including a biometric uh, check-in uh, and also face recognition. So this has become... Uh, a new norm that is expensive, but uh, but we have to slowly uh, adapt uh, to it. And you can see already there are countries way ahead. So the future of the hospitality and tourism jobs is going to evolve, okay? Uh, where the focus is going to be totally in a different area that we are used to. Health has become key. How do we bring that to the forefront of the hospitality? So this is the role of the hospitality and tourism educators as well. Uh, how do we build and maintain the trust with our customers about our daily health? So that has become the trust factor has become key for the tourism job. The management, hands on and hands off, okay? Physical, face-to-face -face versus working from home, working contactlessly, uh, customer interaction where the focus now has become high tech and not high touch, although the hospital and tourism industry is supposed to be high touch. So how do we find the right balance? The use of technology has become key, less uh, touch sensitive and more sensors and facial recognition. These are all the changes that is happening as far as new tourism is, is, uh, is concerned. So what are the implications for you? in terms of your own health, in terms of your, your embracement of technology, working remotely, okay, especially the, especially those of you uh, in the higher education institution, working remotely, okay, screen to screen, moving from, from face to face. How do we adapt and, and live with this virus? Okay, so, uh, so the aim is as we come out of COVID, we don't want to go back to the old tourism. We want a better form of tourism. That is key. We have to learn our lesson from the experience over the last two years. It's a hard lesson, but it's something that we have to learn. So many destinations now will not allow for you to just walk into any destination without a reservation. So meaning to say you have to plan ahead. This is key if you want to manage uh, congestion in destination. This is going to become an important aspect of tourism because most tourists are not going to go to a destination that is overcrowded. Create uh, awareness to be good tourists. Okay, the education part becomes important. So remember, I talked to you about regenerative tourism. So this is key as well. Tourists should be doing more good when they come to a destination. This has become an important aspect of travel after this. Uh, you may be charged conservation fee in many places and that fee must be managed well and not abused. So this fee is what can be used to, to transform the destination uh, uh, and the, this environmental fee or whatever fee that you, 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 you can call it must be used, uh, must be made to be used in, uh, in, in a proper way and not be abused. Uh, show the authentic version of the culture and not uh, 
the comedy fight uh, version that we are, we are all so used to. So in the past, uh, tourism fed into the, the stories of, of marketing executives uh, thought, who, who thought that that is what the tourists wanted to hear. But we got to be clear that when you do the storytelling, it has to be the real story and not just men uh, to, to make the tourists happy. Okay, So this is something that you have to think through. You'll be encouraged to give back. So every tourist that come to destination must be encouraged to give back and any in any form, whatever small contribution that they can do. So, uh, so everyone is moving towards uh, responsible tourism or the, as part of an alternate travel after this. Another concept that has come up, although it's been around since 2014, uh, is uh, nano tourism where the focus is uh, smaller scale, non-intrusive way of uh, promoting uh, tourism. So it is an alternative way of tourism. Uh, so nano tourism is just about uh, the experience itself on a smaller and more detailed level. Uh, it is about uh, taking the smaller day-to-day -day aspect of a destination and getting involved and learning whether that be uh, helping uh, out in the in the local helping out the local community or learning the tradition of harvesting method uh, or even being uh, more intimate uh, organizing more intimate uh, culture and heritage tours so all this has become key aspect of our changes that is happening in the tourism so at the end of the day uh, uh, what is key is for us to reopen Okay, no matter how, what, as long as you're able to manage the, uh, the vaccination, the boosting of whichever, that whichever state that your country is in now, uh, reopening is something that uh, we, we cannot uh, avoid. We have to learn to leave the virus. If you see uh, this screen uh, here, uh, there is a, a plan that has been released recently by the ASEAN, uh, Southeast Asian uh, nation, and uh, close cooperation among the ASEAN countries uh, is key. So close collaboration, as I've said, is an important aspect of uh, the travel and tourism industry. You cannot work in silos anymore. Managing your cross-border travel has become key, okay? Safety and flexibility, which I talked about, is key. Standards, what are the standards? moving forward for every destination must be defined okay how do you uh, manage uh, the digitalization how do you ensure uh, the data are well protected especially when you talk about health data uh, quarantine requirement from one destination to another is so complicated currently so how do we uh, synchronize across uh, the country okay how do you manage the small the smaller uh, destination uh, and also the bigger destination. How can you actually uh, closely work with together? So, so, so there is an important role that the government across the globe uh, have to play in order to support uh, the changes that is happening uh, in the tourism business. So, there are different types of uh, of uh, uh, tourism business that you you see that is happening currently. The focus have actually moved from the traditional types of business. So domestic and leisure travel, as I've seen from the earlier data, has shown uh, an important aspect of travel, vacations, holidays, staycation, weekend getaway, smaller group and bubbles has all become an important aspect of the new travel business. Uh, hotels, the focus now seems to be on a smaller boutique hotel compared to the huge ones. Uh, domestic travel has become a uh, uh, an important aspect. Outdoor uh, activities is key. Not many people want to have activities that are indoor related currently. Uh, Hopefully, tourism industry have to leverage by looking at the current data. Okay, new types of data that is being produced, especially organization like the SDR that I mentioned to you at the beginning. Using this data, you are able to strategize. How do you move forward with your industry? Understanding the customer behavior that has changed, uh, the hotel behavior. The hotel has to, cannot be so stringent in terms of their booking anymore. Uh, continuous research has to be carried out. 
and also a lot of education and classroom impact uh, studies where technology is brought into play, data analytics is brought into play, uh, sustainability is focused. All this has become an important aspect of the travel and tourism industry. Uh, prioritizing uh, your food sector, I mentioned to you as well. How do you ensure uh, the food sector is managed well? The farm to table concept that has been there for a while, now is the time for it to boom. You need to ensure, introduce slow food travel uh, movement where uh, people start appreciating as they travel, appreciating the local heritage and the local food. So there are a lot of new norms that is taking shape in terms of new SOPs, collaboration, new technologies, and new communication approach. So what is also key at the end of the day is the education part of it, okay? The changes in the hospitality and tourism education curriculum transformation is key. Uh, so micro-credentials seem to be the way forward in, in, in the industry currently with more and more institutions rolling out short courses that is uh, very skill-oriented, very professional-based certification and work-based learning seem to be the new way forward for the hospitality and tourism uh, education. So in short, uh, to conclude, uh, there is a lot of new uh, conversation that is taking place across the globe uh, for the whole world to work together. We cannot work in silos anymore. There is a healthy competition. We are still competing one nation to another, but there is also a healthy collaboration that is taking place, especially regionally, because once a regional is a, a particular region is unstable, regardless unstable, then it impacts every single country in that region. So we have to rethink what we value for the future. Okay, the uh, COVID situation have really opened our eyes in terms of how we manage the environment, how we manage the people, okay, the health status of the of, of every country. All this has become key aspect. So there's a lot of pathway that has come up uh, in linking up people and heritage and places. So we need to sustain that. We are moving into regenerative, making a destination much, much better than how it was uh, in the past. Uh, the new experience. So travel behavior, the consumer behavior have changed for both uh, domestic and also uh, international travel. So we need to understand uh, the travelers or visitors that is coming to your destination and see what are the changes that you need to do. So there is an urgency for us to revive the tourism industry uh, and also uh, create the confidence for the travelers because uh, uh, currently the, the confidence is still low because it is very complicated to travel currently uh, with all the uh, uh, SOPs that is put in place uh, for COVID compliance. So it is difficult, uh, but we uh, you can see some countries are slowly lifting up and, and changing, making it as easy as possible. And hopefully over the next uh, one year or, or more than one year, I suppose, uh, you, we, will can, we can get back to almost normalcy in terms of how we travel, but uh, the change will still happen in terms of the quality of what we are doing in every destination. We have to move away from focusing on mass, from low yield to high quality, high yield. So that is the way forward for the hospitality and tourism industry as we start defining the new way forward for the hospitality and tourism industry. So that is all for my uh, presentation today. Uh, thank you uh, for, I hope you have listened uh, to the presentation. My email is uh, on the screen. I am very sorry that I'm not there to answer your burning question. Uh, feel free to write to me uh, with, with the email here uh, or through the organizer and I'll be glad to, to respond to you. So once again, my apologies to the organizer uh, for not being able to present this live and I had to do this presentation just a few hours before the, the actual uh, slot that was given to me. So have a pleasant day, uh, stay safe and have a good conference. Thank you.